<sighs> okay, sir. I understand. Yes, sir. Sheriff Morris will have a statement ready as soon as we have all the details. Please, stand by until then. Okay, bye-bye. Looks like you're going through it. Looks like you've been through worse. My god, Jack. What happened to you? You don't want to know. Ugh, your hand! It's burned! It's not as bad as it could have been. I'll be alright. Any news on Lopez? I need to go over with him some information on McGowan I just discovered. Last I heard, he was doing okay. Poor kid. This has just got him all wound up. Maybe when you have some spare time, you could go to the hospital and visit him? I'm sure it would boost his spirits. Uh, we'll see. I'm serious, Jack. He really looks up to you, and he's technically your partner. I know you've been through a lot the past few months, but for once, just... Think about somebody other than yourself. Anywho, since I've got you here, the boss needs to see you in his office immediately. I didn't spill the beans to him, but apparently someone tipped him off about your... adventure... to plant albatross yesterday. Brilliant. <laughs> Good luck. to see me? I did. Come in. Have a seat. Before you begin, how much do you already know? Well, I know that you pissed off the wrong people. Lamar, it's not what it looks like. I was just trying Trespassing. to... Trespassing. Plain and simple. David Ingram is going to have us wrapped up in so many litigations, I'm not going to be able to retire till I'm 150. I wasn't thinking. I guess I just... Damn right you weren't thinking. Carmichael already wants you off this case. You've only added more fuel to that fire now, Jack. <sighs> but I'm gonna let it slide and forget about it for a moment. You... you are? Yes, although against my better judgment. You're my deputy, and I'm going to support you with every fiber of my being. Now... Tell me how you ended up on McGowan's property. I saw it. That thing that killed the kids. Really? I don't know how I'm still alive. Go on. I was searching for evidence in the woods between the pond and the rear of the property when that... that monster came out of nowhere and started chasing me. I unloaded an entire magazine on it, but it wasn't phased at all, so I just ran for my life. I got cornered by the edge of the property, and I had no other choice but to jump the fence. An electric fence, no less. After that, all I remember is being dragged away by guards, reliving the nightmare of that night in Chicago, and I woke up in my truck this morning. Damn. So they drugged you then. Without a doubt. But with what, I haven't the slightest idea. <sighs> David will most likely argue that your intentions to trespass were already there. It's a weak argument at best, but it might be enough to get the mayor off my back. Consider the burn your discipline. How confident are you that this beast is our perp? I'd risk my life to hunt it down and kill it. That's how confident I am. I see. Hmm. Theoretically speaking, how would you do that? If guns are useless against it, what other means would you consider? If I may be frank, it ain't stupid enough to grab high voltage. <laughs> Do you think it was repelled by the electric fence? Mm-hmm. It made a strange noise when it hit the fence. It was like the sound a cat makes when it's uneasy with its surroundings. 
So theoretically, I would have to lure it to a place that produces large amounts of electricity and zap it like a bug. Hmm, indeed you might. But just so we're covering all our bases, what did it look like? Just as the Rosensterns described it, long snout with a bunch of sharp teeth, scales, claws, almost like a Komodo dragon's but longer and sharper. It had a tail like an alligator and it stood on hind legs. Oddly enough, it was muscular, like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. Did the monster look like this? Oh, that's it! Where did you get this? We found a disposable camera in another part of the corn maze. We had the film developed and confirmed that it belonged to Monica Prescott. This was the very last photo taken. We believe she either took a photo of it and it became spooked and attacked her, or she managed to take it during the attack itself. We're not sure which. But what we are certain of is that this thing killed her. It's... it's your call. We can't proceed unless we have another witness verify this creature is undeniably real. Think you can pull that off? I think so, yes. Could you do one thing for me, sir? What's that? Give David a call and tell him and his client to come down here. Tell him I'd like to discuss the uh, trespassing issue. I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> yeah, I think I can do that for you. Finish this, Jack. Finish it. I'll do my best. Or I'll die trying. It's way past curfew. What are you and your friends doing here? I could ask you and your boyfriend the same thing. We're trying to figure out what happened to our friends. We're attempting to form a plan. Ooh. Well, maybe we can help. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. This isn't some cartoon or some game. This is real life stuff, and it's dangerous. You want to help us? Go home and cover for me. Got that pea brain? Lighten up. Your brother is smart. He can probably help us figure this out faster. And his friends? We're a package deal, Sam. Where Josh goes, we go. We'd like to help if we can. Show us what you got. Sure thing. Here's a map of Oak Bridge. We've been mulling over the locations of the murders, trying to establish a pattern. And? In the past couple of days, there were three incidents. First, the Rosensterns at their residence on Cherry Drive, here. Second, Andy and Eric over here at Terrell's Pond near the bridge. Finally, Monica over here at Bruce's Corn Maze at Montgomery Farms off Stillwater Road. What is it? Don't you get it? There's about 10 miles difference between each location, and they all extend from one place. The nuclear power plant right here. Me and some of the guys tried to put flowers out for Eric and Andy today, and we saw these guys in hazmat suits. They wouldn't let us get near the pond. Why would you go to a murder scene? That's like you're asking for trouble. Just wanted to pay my respects, I guess. But still, these are three isolated incidents. And I don't recall ever seeing Hazmat respond to an animal attack. They weren't cleaning. They were disposing of evidence and covering their tracks. Again, why would you want to mess with that kind of heat? You are asking for a lot of trouble. Be nice, Claire. If something happened to you, we'd want to know too. Bad juju, Trev. Don't curse me with that bad luck. Knock on wood. Anyways, they said it was a big animal, and the only thing big enough to do that kind of damage is a bear or a pack of coyotes. There is one problem. What's that? It doesn't add up. Black bears are more afraid of humans than humans are afraid of them. 
In the rare chance that Monica was attacked by one, it is impossible that Eric and Andy were done in by the same. Two large humans are enough to ward one off. Coyotes hunt in small packs. When it comes to large prey, they go for the ankles first, or the hamstring. When the prey falls, that's when they go for the neck. The news said nothing about lower body injuries. And as Sam said, they wouldn't go for large humans. You guys are missing the biggest thing. And what is that? They weren't eaten. Uh, dude, seriously? That's not funny, bro. I wasn't trying to be funny. No, he's right. A predator isn't going to kill just to kill. It's going to feed. So that means we are right. Something else killed them. And we're going to find out tonight. It's almost curfew. Can we do this tomorrow? We aren't doing anything. Doug and I are doing this, and you are going home. If you're staying out, I'm staying out. Come on, little bro. We need someone to cover for us. Hey! So, the Lycans are allied with the Ecor tribe here. And they are trying to prevent an invasion from the Elderborn here. But what they don't know is that there is a secret invasion about to happen here from the Daywalkers. The sacred ruby of Valar is in the center, right about here. If they find it, all will be saved. That is, if they can defeat the Great Minotaur first. You kids do love that little game of yours. <laughs> I will never get it. Whew, that was close. Way to think on your toes, Josh. Don't encourage him. See? We're an asset. Yeah. If you get into trouble, we got your back. So, what's the plan? Since we're here at Haggerty's, we're going to head to the Charles Woods area and stake that place out first. Then, we'll go from there. Hey, Trevor, isn't that the woods over in our neighborhood? It sure is. You know what that means, right? You're not coming with us. Go home. Can't stop us. You're going to our neck of the woods. You'll need us to help you navigate. Looks like we have another mystery to solve. Six heads are better than two. No! I don't think you're going to win this one, babe. Shut it, Fletcher, or you're back in the doghouse. I'm never going to win, am I? Nope. Just take what's coming to you. She'll get over it. Eventually. I'm home. Samantha? Joshua? Sam? Josh? Where are you guys? Hi, Beth. This is Julia. Is Sam there with Doug? Oh, no. I'm sure nothing's wrong. It's just a little close to curfew, and she's not home yet. That's fine. If she shows up there, can you please have her give me a call? Thank you. Bye-bye. Jack, it's so good to see you again. Please come in. Who's at the door? It's Jack! Hey, Jack, come on in. 
I didn't mean to come so late, and I can't stay long, but we got a break in the case, and I need you to confirm something for me. Sure. What you got? I need you and Mildred to take a look at this photo and verify what you see. Oh. That's it. That's what came to our back porch. You don't think that it's Yes, a... ma'am. That's the direction we're leaning towards. Oh, those poor children. Those poor, poor children. Have you caught the son of a bitch yet? Not yet, but we're close. See, I told you that thing wasn't a bear. Huh. Nobody believes us. Ever. They all think we're old and senile. But I know a bear when I see a bear. And that thing wasn't a bear. Is that why those men in those funny-looking suits were here? Wait, what men in funny-looking suits? Oh, I don't know. They just showed up and said there was some sort of leak from the plant and that they had to check it out. We were told we had nothing to worry about. Yeah, and they wore puffy yellow suits with an oxygen mask attached. Real professional-like. Hazmat? Really? That's... That's certainly made-for-TV stuff right there. It sure is. Is there anything else you need from us? I'll need a written statement from both of you. Everything from the night you encountered the creature, its appearance, and even what happened when those men in suits came to your house. Sure thing. Anything for you, Jack. What is that thing, anyway? I honestly don't know. I just want to stop it from hurting anyone else. Oh, please, be careful. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything else we can help you with. I will, and thank you for your help. Haggerty's Diner, how can I help you? Hey, Natalie, it's Julia Ingram. Have you seen Sam and Josh today? Yes, ma'am. They were here about an hour ago with their little friends. Did they say where they were going when they left? No, sweetie. I didn't hear anything. But if I see them, I'll run them all home for you. Thanks. You're a lifesaver. Please keep me posted. All right. I'll call you if I see them. Thank you, Natalie. Happy to help. <sighs> I do hope you find them. I just love it when they come in here. They're some of my favorite customers. You don't think this has anything to do with the murders, do you? Hello? Julia? Are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, goodness me, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure they're fine. No need to apologize, Nat. This week is just... Got the whole town on it. Thank you for your help. Hello? There better be a perfectly good explanation for why I'm here, instead of having this conversation over the phone. Sheriff Morris is old-fashioned. If he intends to apologize, he's going to do it in person. So, he couldn't come to us? Absolutely not. It's bad enough we have Harris snooping around. You don't want Sheriff Morris, too. Hey, David. Hello, Rita. Peter McGowan and I are here to speak with the sheriff. David and his client are here. Want me to send them in? Yes, send them to the interview room, please. Gentlemen, come in. Please, have a seat. Good evening, fellas. Jack Harris, you've got some nerve, you know that? Trespassing and the destruction of property, not to mention the cost of cleaning up after your visit. And the overtime we had to pay to complete it? We expect full compensation for all of your violations. 
I hope you learned your lesson, deputy. What were you trying to accomplish anyway, hmm? Did you seriously believe you could come to my facility unannounced and come out on the other side, a hero and unscathed, hmm? I hope we didn't go too far on you, but I needed you to know whose territory you'd ventured onto. Just take a seat, Mr. McGowan, so we can talk about it further. What's there to discuss? You illegally trespassed on my property, and now must pay the consequences. You're in my territory now, McGowan, and you're going to play by my rules. Take. A. Seat. Fine. Looks like we're ready to talk now, gentlemen. What are you doing, Harris? We're here to talk about the trespassing. That's it. Here's a photo of a serial tag Officer Lopez and I discussed with you the other day. Again, we are not here for this. We are here to discuss Here's the another picture of the tag lying next to their bodies. And this one here is a picture of claw marks on the base of a tree that Andy Carter and Eric Peterson were found leaning up against. Here's one of their bodies. That's enough. No, there's no need to show us such a graphic crime scene. It was most unfortunate what happened to those children, but their demise has nothing to do with me. Dial it back some, Jack. Don't get carried away. If it has nothing to do with you, then why did you send your men to clean up the mess? I did nothing of the sort. It looks like we are not here to receive an apology. And seeing as my client isn't under arrest or being detained, we shall take our leave. Sit down, David. We're not done yet. Now, are we going to resolve this, or are you going to keep playing games? What proof? Do you have that ties all this to Plan Albatross? We have substantial evidence, Mr. McGowan. Show him, Jack. Where did you get this? This picture was taken by Monica Prescott on her camera right before she was murdered. Can you tell me what you see in it? Mr. McGowan, please refrain from speaking. Uh, I see, uh, being on two legs with sharp claws and razor-sharp teeth. Mm-hmm. And what is this being doing? It's, uh... Its mouth is wide open, and its arms are fashioned in an attack position. And here is a signed statement from Ernie and Mildred Rosenstern, stating that this creature is what they saw in their backyard. Again, an unfortunate situation that has nothing to do with us. Except it does, because along with this tag, it appears that this thing is also branded. And you can see clearly in the picture that the numbers match. M.I. 10. Stop playing games! Why did you send this thing to kill those kids? I didn't send it to kill anyone. It's not programmed to attack humans. That is it! We are done here. My client will be invoking his Fifth Amendment rights moving forward. You're going to help me take this thing down, or we're going to have an issue. Idle threats won't be of your benefit. It'd be a shame if the media got a hold of this information. <laughs> Imagine how your company would fare when it all becomes public. Ah, we can handle this locally, or we can handle this federally. <laughs> the choice is yours. I'm listening. Mr. McGowan, we are leaving now. Gentlemen, please allow Deputy Harris and me to have a moment alone. Absolutely not! Shut up, David, and do as I say. The floor is yours. Over one million deaths. Nearly 300,000 of these were U.S. or Allied deaths. The rest were Viet Cong and civilians. There is nothing more frightening to a man than the face of war. The screams on the battlefield, the napalm, the blood, the feeling of your homeland despising you when you come home. There is no love, no parades, just hate. Jane Fonda led a campaign to disgrace us and our brothers and the sacrifices we made. Hanoi Jane is praised and we were spat upon. And to make matters worse, our government left us with nothing. 
Do you know who Dan Bullock is? No. He was the youngest American soldier, killed in action in Vietnam. He was 15 years old. The reason I'm saying all of this is because I found a way to eliminate the American blood spilled in war. A reserve valve for when there seems to be no breakthrough in combat, and a safety net for America against her enemies. The entity that attacked those young people is a hybrid killing machine, programmed to obey its masters, able to traverse any terrain, and resistant to almost anything you throw at it. That would explain why my sidearm didn't harm it. Exactly. That's why this beast is the perfect military weapon. Think about it, Deputy. Desert Shield would have never become Desert Storm because Colin Powell and Norman Schwarzkopf would have freed Kuwait in a day and cleared Iraq in a week. This is our future. Wars and rumors of wars will never cease. And this is how we stop millions of needless deaths. This is how we stay ahead of the game. This is how we save lives. We're not done in the Middle East. The ceasefire is just a regroup for a bigger war. Meanwhile, North Korea is developing its nuclear program with China's support. McGowan Industries has created the new American hero, one that can eliminate and perhaps even prevent war without destroying our great land, and we do it with this. Save lives? Your new American hero killed three people, and now Oak Bridge is terrified and on edge. And we deserve peace. Those kids deserve justice. I'm going to bring them that peace. I'm going to deliver that justice. I understand your concern. However, you don't have the resources to compete with a conglomerate like mine. I have enough evidence that you, or someone within your company, ordered that thing to attack those kids. And now, you've confessed to producing a weapon of mass destruction. Can your conglomerate handle that kind of attention? As I have previously stated, that particular specimen is not programmed to attack humans. I'm sure you can explain that to the parents of Eric, Andy, and Monica. Let's not forget it tried to kill me as well. Unless you provoked it, I promise it wouldn't have attacked you. I didn't do anything to provoke it. I was just walking in the woods. The boys were fishing, and Monica was walking through a corn maze for Christ's sake. The creature is highly intelligent, and it knows a threat when it sees one, especially if that threat is loud like a firearm. It perceived you as the enemy. And Eric and Andy? I hardly think a fishing pole would spook it. Two males intrude within your territory and temper with your water and food source. MI-10 could have easily assumed they were a threat and acted accordingly to defend its territory. As for the female victim, the flash of her camera set it off. Hundreds of lights flickering across this town, and you mean to tell me that the flash of a disposable camera gave it a reason to attack a teenage girl in the middle of a corn maze? That's a far stretch, even for you. It would appear so, yes. I suppose that's it, then. I'll handcuff you and place you under arrest for the murders of Andy Carter, Eric Peterson, and Monica Prescott. Perhaps we can agree on another option? Try me. Your silence for our relocation. We will clean up our mess, and all evidence of MI-10 will be returned to us. And what will I get out of this? I'll drop the trespassing charges against you. I'm not much for making deals with criminals. But you are into keeping the peace, aren't you? I am too. It's what I'm good at, in all avenues. I'll agree to your terms if, and only if, you help me capture it and destroy it. You got it, deputy. Lamar, I... I need your help. I can't. There's nothing I can say or do to get your client out of this one, I'm afraid. No, no, it's not about that. It's more... it's more personal. Trouble between you and Julia? Julia would die. 
if I told you this, but we, um, we're getting a divorce. Really? She hasn't mentioned this to me yet. I kind of hope she doesn't. I love her, sir, and our family, and I, I just don't want that fabric torn apart. I see, and, and what do you want me to do about it? I've never been one to meddle in my daughter's affairs. You know that. Could you just talk to her for me? Tell her to think things over? I'll think about it. Can't make any promises. I thought you said you were drinking coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I did, uh, but I prefer my Joe on the Irish side. And besides, uh, maybe a little whiskey will help you loosen up a little. Have you seen Jack or my dad? I need help. Julia? What are you doing here? David, it's Sam and Josh. They haven't come home yet. I got worried and called around, and the last place they were seen was Haggerty's. Over an hour ago. And it's well past the townwide curfew. Did you page Sam? What do you think I've been doing this whole time? She hasn't called me back. And it can only mean there isn't a payphone around them. What if they're stuck in the woods somewhere? Or worse, we have to find them. I'm sure they're fine. They're probably on their way home right now. Jules, what are you doing here? Everything's fine. Nothing for you to be concerned about. My kids, when I got home, they weren't there. And I can't get a hold of them. I don't know what I would do if I lost my babies. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing for you to worry about. Just calm down and wait for them at home. You're a real piece of work, you know that? You know good and well what's out there and what it did and what it's capable of. Seems to me like you'd rather protect your client and his experiment than the lives of your own children. You keep my kids out of this, Jack. David, what is he talking about? I am not at liberty to discuss anything involving my clients. Don't you think we're far beyond attorney-client confidentiality at this point? Can someone please explain to me what in the hell is going on here? I can't. I just can't with you. This is exactly why we aren't working. You choose your damn career over your family every single time. These are our kids, David. They come first. Why can't you see that? I can't believe you forgot what's most important. If you know something, say it. Please. He only knows what I tell him. As for your kids, they'll be just fine as long as they're nowhere near the plant. W what uh, I think I know where they might be. Rita, can you page Sam for me until you get a response? Here's the number. Okay. Jack, wait up. Where do you think they are? You said they were last seen at the diner, right? It's not too far from the first murder site. I think they went on a monster hunt of their own. What? We will find them, I promise. Well, don't just stand there. We must follow them. You made a deal? Without me being present, are you trying to get prosecuted? Don't get riled up. I've got Barney Fife right where I want him. Put that thing on silent. 
That thing is loud. They let you have that in school? Not really. What are they gonna do? Take it away? Give it to our mom? I'm just gonna give it back to her. I keep it in my locker most of the time. Shh. What was that? There. Over there, by that ravine. Josh, you and Trevor go check it out. No, thank you. What? No way! Sam, that's how people die in movies. I'll go. Really? Yeah. It's probably just a raccoon or something. <laughs> Hold you. Just a raccoon. <sighs> oh, turn that thing off. You're going to give away our location. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is the police station paging me? Oh, no. Guys, we gotta go. What's wrong? We lost track of time. It's way past curfew. Wasn't that the whole point? I kind of understood that we were going to be out past curfew. Yeah, but not this late. It's 1030. Did you hear that? Hear what? Did the raccoon come back? No, no. It's... It's something else. I'm calling it. We need to go home now. Trevor and Evie, ride your bikes straight home. Claire and Josh, ride to the car and put your bikes in the back. S seriously, I think something is coming from over there. Get the bikes. Everybody run to the car. This episode was written by Tyrus Rayner. Directed by James DeVroe Lewis. Produced by Mark Helton, Ashley Dean, and James DeVroe Lewis. Audio editing and effects by Joe Bly with Kiana Music. Original music by Louis Palfrey. Original artwork by Jam the Artist. This episode featured the voice talents of Connor Howard as Jack. Monica Wolfkill as Julia. Justin Clauser as Sheriff Morris. Remy Savard as Peter. David Sword as David. Rachel Anderson as Sam. Ari Kafarada Jenkins as Doug. Sarah Velarde as Josh. Caitlin Cole as Claire. J. Rome as Trevor. Anouk Savard as Evie. Gina Moravec as Rita. Joseph Bly as Ernie. Katie Marie Bly as Mildred. Anita Kelly as Natalie. And I'm Jenny Helton, your announcer. The series was created by Ashley Dean and is proudly produced by 97 to Now Productions. For more information about the show, please visit our website. Tune in next time as Oak Bridge continues. Mm -hmm.